Hey guys, I'm Michelle and this is Dish. And Dish has a story that she wants to share with you guys. Some of you guys know us and some of you don't. But we're hoping that this story gets to the right chains and that we can actually get something from it. Like it can go to the right channels and something can happen here. So basically, Dish has a story to tell you guys about her dad. And I know there's a lot of stories going on about the VAs, the uh, Veterans Association, um, mistreating their people, patients, and there's a, just a lot of stuff out there right now about it. So, Dish has a story along the same lines, and some, you know, and she wants to share it with everybody. She wants to put it out there. So, that's kind of what's going to happen. Um, she's going to share, this is something she normally wouldn't share with just anybody, but she thinks that it should be put out there, and I think it should too. I think everybody should know what's going on, right. and, um, and your dad's honor to do this. So, what branch was your dad in? Oh, Army. In the Army. Army. Yep. And he was in the Vietnam War. Yes. He also was a POW. Yes, he was awarded a Purple Heart for being a prisoner of war. Right, so he was a prisoner of war. So that in itself right there is a big thing. Because um, he, he was a vet. Yeah. Um, your dad passed away June 29th of 2015. Yes. Okay. Where was your dad at? What hospital? What um, place was he at? It was uh, Grand Rapids um, Home for Vets okay. in Michigan. And he was there because why? I mean, I know that um, if you tell them some of some a little bit of what was going on with your dad, why he was there, and what injuries and stuff that he had from the war. Okay, well, he was exposed to Agent Orange, which, mm -hmm. you know, just about everybody was, and it wreaked havoc on his body. Um, he ended up having um, renal failure, and he lost both of his legs um, because of the Agent Orange. And um, he did get um, diabetes also. So he was on, you said, you had mentioned to me, he was on dialysis for like 10 years, which was crazy because people don't go on dialysis no, that long but they, he was fortunate enough to yeah he was he was they just couldn't believe it they they were amazed by him that he was still alive you know after 10 years plus of having dialysis yes it's pretty much unheard of so he went to this place um this Grand Rapids Home for Vets, he went there because your mom could no longer, or you could no longer right. help him, like physically, like upper body strength, yeah. I mean. He uh, would go to dialysis and he would be drained. I mean, just drained. He had absolutely no, no strength anywhere. He couldn't even get from his chair on the slider board to the bed on his own. He couldn't do anything on his own. Um, my mom had to do everything um, for him, and um, I tried to help as much as I could. Um, he would he fell constantly, um, usually going to di dialysis. We'd be trying to get him into the vehicle, and he would fall. And sometimes he would fall inside the vehicle to the floor. So he had to be picked up and, and things like that. And my mom wasn't you know physically able to do that. And I wasn't around a lot, and um, when I was around, I realized what a whore, you know what a, a burden she had to deal with because he couldn't do anything for himself. And and I you know I had mentioned to my mom that he needed to be put someplace where he could be looked after 24 hours a day. My mom has osteoarthritis, osteoporosis, all that stuff, and she's not physically able to do that. And I couldn't be there all the time. And um, she said no. And she, she took care of him for like another year. And I, and I said, Mom, please, we need to do this. And finally, she decided that, yeah, he needed to have more help. Right. Well, I mean, then that's what it's there for. 
It is, yeah. For help for him. Yeah. They weren't just putting him somewhere no. and forgetting about him. No. Your mom still done his laundry, everything was there always, constantly. Yeah, she went to see him probably four times a week, and she always brought his laundry home and brought him fresh laundry, um, brought him food. Um, sometimes they would go out to eat together and all that stuff. So she definitely didn't forget about him or anything like that. Um, so while he was in the hospital and stuff, your mom got some money. Yes. To help, um, her dad got money to help to redo, do repairs on the house and help to repair the house where he could come home on the weekends to be with his family, at least on the weekends. You guys were going to try to make sure this happened. Yep, it was, uh... It was right. It was right before he had passed. You know, before he died, um, she got uh, or he got a check to you know help out with the house repairs and things like that. Yes. And the check was uh, relatively large, um, and so that was for the house. And every bit of that money needed to go towards the house, and you know, pay bills up, yes. that stuff. You know, because everybody gets behind, and I understand that. So, with that being said, just keep that in mind because there's more to this story, guys. So, keep that in mind. He did get a lump sum of money, and it was to go towards the house of fixing stuff that needed to be done, da-da-da, so on. So, he passed in June 29th of 2015. Yes. And when he passed, he was at the VA home. Yes. So... Tell everybody a little bit about, you guys got like three different phone calls. Yes. We had three different stories surrounding his death. So nobody at the home knows how he died except for one person. Yes. But nobody knows how he dies. A nurse calls you up and tells you he had a heart attack the same day that it all took place. Yes. But she's not a coroner and she, you know, she didn't, she doesn't know. She's right. not, she wasn't the doctor so she just couldn't throw out there to you, oh, he had a heart attack. She doesn't know because nothing has been completed yet. No death certificate. So she could, right. she, you know, she couldn't say. But she did. Um, there was a story um, they got caught on the seatbelt and choked to death. Yes, that was the, I think, the third story. That was the last story. That one was he died in bed or something yes. to that nature. He, he died, died in bed. In, in in bed, yes. And then there was another story um, that it makes, you know, just that he, he fell over into the bushes In outside. In the bushes, yes, and, and died uh, of a heart attack. So this was like 1.30 in the morning, guys, and this is a facility that has nurses that are supposed to be monitoring patients. Now, you know, he did have diabetes and stuff, and you said there at the end he wasn't kind of in his right mind and stuff. Right. Like he was kind of different. He was. He was. There was a huge change in my father. Totally, it, it was kind of like not the same person. Okay. So, with that being said, you they're gonna let this guy go out in a motorized chair. Yes. At 1:30 in the morning. And somebody had to have gotten him out of bed and put in the chair for him to do this. He couldn't have done it by himself. Okay. So you got a resident or a CNA, whatever you guys call them, to help. Her dad into a chair, his motorized chair, so that he could go out and smoke a cigarette at 1.30 in the morning. 1.30 in the morning, yes. Now, I don't see where that should have happened at 1.30 in the morning. I mean, I, I, I used to be a smoker. I know there's cravings, but at 1.30 in the morning, especially in Michigan and it being cold. Yes. You know, I mean, I know it was warm, but just to a, an older person, especially somebody on dialysis, their blood is not... You're right, and you know, and, and June's not exactly, you know. Right, but that's what I'm saying, that cold, night, you know, like, I mean, yeah. why was he out, why would they, I mean, he could catch pneumonia, him being on dialysis, anything could be, you know, he could yeah. catch anything, and then he couldn't go to dialysis and stuff. Right. Just, you know, putting that out there. Mm -hmm. So, they don't know, No, nobody has told you or your mom or your family exactly how he died. You guys have no clue. No. No. No clue. Nobody has told him anything for definite. This is how your father died. 
And do you know what it says on the birth certificate? I don't know. Oh, I didn't see it or anything. But That's, yeah, well, it just says that um, it was a heart attack followed by strangling. Strangulation. Strangulation, yes. Yep. So he was in the bed, he was in the bushes, and, and had a heart attack and died, and then he got strangled on his seatbelt. On Supposedly, you got a man that has no legs. He was relatively a large man. Yes. And he got choked on his seatbelt. Now, yep. the seatbelt goes across you here. Yeah. So that means he was out there long enough to slide down. Slide down, yes. To where it would have choked him. Yep. And nobody was around monitoring, no cameras, no nurses walking, nobody checking on nobody or anything, and he just sits there and strangles to death. There was a man with him, another resident okay. of, of the VA home, and apparently they were outside together, and um, he went for help, but it was too late, and um, he was asked by lawyers how my father died, and he's too afraid <coughs> to tell how my father died. He's too afraid. So your family went to lawyers and said, yeah. hey, you know, we got a witness here that seen how he died, but he, for some reason, was fearful and would not, I don't know if it was his job or anything, but he was too fearful to say how your dad died, so the you guys couldn't get a lawyer to seek out any wrongful death or anything like that because there's nobody, but I thought they could subpoena them. I thought they could too. Um, I, I mean, a witness is a witness, and yeah. I thought that they could just subpoena them and, and mm -hmm. say, hey, look, you go, you're coming to court and tell them what you know, whether you like yeah. it or not. That's what I, I, I thought. Was, that's, that's what I thought, too. But, but, I mean, I don't know how the laws are there, but a little bit more to this story that you guys don't know that we're going to tell you. And like I said, this is a lot for her to have to put out here on the table, but it needs to be said, and this was all her yeah. idea. She wanted to do this. Nobody asked, you know, coached her. Nobody, this is all her. She just wants to find out what happened and maybe it'll go through the right channels and get to the right people. But while your dad was there at the end, just months before he passed, mm -hmm. your dad, how long had you and your, your mom and your dad had their checking account? Since they were married. Okay, you know, so... Since they were married, right. lo lots of years, people, lots of years. Over 30 um, years. Over 30 years, they had their banking account together. And all of a sudden, her dad goes and opens up his own personal banking account, something that he would not normally do after 30 years. No. Wh why? Never. You know what I'm yeah, saying? There's no way. He opens up his own checking account. Sets it up, and then he transfers money out of her mom's and his account to his account. Add the blue. Yep. He does one for $15,000, and that's where this comes in at. Right. They got money to redo the house. Well, he took $15,000 and transferred to his account. Then a few weeks later, he took another $5,000. Yes. And transferred the account. That's twenty thousand dollars, people. Lots of zeros there. Um, it's gone. Yep. Nobody knows where it went to. Nobody has a clue where this money went to. He had told a story. Um. Uh, you know that uh, about money and somebody at the home or whatnot, but your mom and them didn't get the just of everything he was trying to say, that he needed the money, she asked why, mm -hmm. but you feel that it could have been blackmail or manipulation. Yes, I do. There was a, a nurse or somebody at the home that was definitely taking money from my father. So he's got $20,000 that's supposed to be going towards home repairs for your mother yeah. and you. And, and him to be able to come home on the weekends and stuff like that. Um, and this $20,000 is miraculously just, it's gone. There's, it was not in his account or anything. Yeah, when he passed away, there was just like a couple dollars in his 
Well, okay, so he passed away on June 29th. Yes. Well, then just a couple of days, he would have got his check because he was a vet and he did get his check. Yes. The first of the month. Yes. That check was not in that account. Somebody had took a debit card and drawn the money out of his account, his personal account, and the money was gone and they have no clue where the money went. That check he got on the first after he passed. It was only a couple days. See, they didn't, the VA didn't know that. They didn't know he'd pass, so they don't work that fast. And the money would have had to have gone back to them anyways, rightfully. Right. It would have, but yeah. the money was gone. It was Somebody, gone, yeah. So whoever he set this account up, when he set this account up, and he can't get to a bank. He don't drive or anything. No, he doesn't drive. Um, they have a, a place that will take them places, you know, the... Uh, but it's out of the ordinary, your dad would just dad, yeah, automatically, no. hey, I want my own banking account after 30 years. That was so strange. My mom's done, paid the bills, their whole married, you know, life. Um, they never had different checking accounts or anything. Never. So when he yeah. did that, it was it was a jaw dropper. I mean, it was... The money, he just drew the money out and didn't even tell her he was doing it. She just right. found out it was gone yep, and didn't ask it. questions. Yeah. And... They never found a debit card or nothing on him. No. When he passed, it was there was no debit card. Yeah. So that's kind of where you know they get money. Money's gone. Where you know you can manipulate old people. You can blackmail them or do whatever. So your mom found after he passed, your mom found a letter in his stuff. Yes. The little bit of stuff that the home gave back to her. There was a letter in there. To some lady that was an aide or a nurse, yes, telling him thank you. Without his help, she couldn't have made it. Yes, so we know for a fact due to this letter, and I believe there was some other ones found too, that he was giving money to at least one of the people that worked there, a woman. Okay, so he was giving. So somebody has manipulated this man that has diabetes. He was a he was a Purple Heart. Prisoner of war, Vietnam vet, lost both his legs, had HR, dialysis, and he's in this, he's in this home because, you know, her mom can't, I, you know, I, know, I know her mom, I've met her mom, her mom physically couldn't pick this guy up. No. I mean, your dad. No. She, I understand that. You, you come to a point where, you know, you just can't do it, you need the help, and that's what the VA home's there for, is for help. But you got this guy that has all this stuff, and, and Purple Heart people, I'm saying, you know, the, a Purple Heart. And you've got some nurse or some aide at this VA home in Grand Rapids that has taken $20,000. Yeah. $20,000. That's a lot of money. It is. It's a lot of money, yeah, it is. And then took his money out of his account whenever he... After he died, two days after he died, they were already taking money out of his account. They yanked it before, but nobody, because the debit card was in his name, obviously. Right. So nobody knows what happened. Right, exactly. It's gone. So, you know, it is, it's just kind of crazy. And, I mean, that's that's why she's doing this video is to say, hey, look, anybody out there know anything about this? Is anybody, can you guide what, where she can go, what she can do to try to find out how her dad died for definite? And, you know, what your rights are and stuff. Yes, exactly. Because that money, that $20,000 should be in your mom's account right now because your mom is be. struggling. Yeah. Since your dad passed, your mom has had to struggle. Oh, she's terribly. She's struggling. She, she don't know which end is up sometimes. She's going through a lot because, I mean, you know, you lose your significant other yep. and everything's like on her now. Like everything is just dropped on her. And she could have done so much with that $20,000. Oh, yeah, I mean, she definitely. could have really, she could have, I mean, a lot of stuff, just personal stuff that we're not going to get into that could be took care of and things could, be, she would not be worrying right now. Right. And, and I really want to know why the witness was so terrified that he wouldn't just say, hey, he fell out of his chair, died, or what? It what could have been about a job, because, I mean, jobs coming, I mean, where if you're an aide or whatever. He's not, he was, he's, he's a resident, he wasn't an aide, he, he was another veteran. Oh, He was okay. another veteran, yes. 
So he probably fears for his safety and home, exactly. probably. Yeah, like exactly. being, I didn't know it was another veteran. Yeah, it's another veteran. I, I said resident. I should have said veteran. Yeah, he. So it was somebody who was just out there with him. Yeah. But but still, it wasn't a nurse. No camera footage or anything. Right, no. It was not somebody from the VA that should be been watching him at that time of night. Exactly. He should not. Bottom line, he shouldn't have been outside smoking. No. He, he shouldn't have been. Not at 1.30 in the morning. This, this should have never happened. No. Whoever took him out of bed and allowed him to go outside, you know, sorry, shame on you. You should have never let that happen. Mm-mm. Uh, I just, um, I just, it's kind of crazy. It, it just all didn't make sense. Um, it, you know, and your dad has cell phone, and there was unknown numbers on the cell phone. Yeah, there was uh, two numbers that were repeated, you know, they were on there a lot, and um, they were uh, women, women's names, I don't know, um, see I don't think the lawyer looked into any of that stuff. But our lawyer said, no, this person won't testify, so we have no case, and I just think that's bogus, I think that's bull, yes, yes. I think that... They, you do have, I mean, a wrongful death suit or something yeah. because, I mean, you don't even know how he died and if he was out there and he shouldn't have been, I mean, that's just, that's a no. I mean, yeah, I, I mean I but how many people else has died and they've swept it under the rug? That's what I'm calling it, sweeping under the rug. Yeah, that's... Because nobody's trying to do anything. I mean, you, you're, your family's tried, but they yeah. just shut them down, but they, they need uh, a bigger voice. Yeah. And I guess that's what you're looking for, a bigger voice. Most definitely. I mean, it's been, a, you know, over a year now, obviously. And, you know, we tried the lawyers. We tried all that kind of stuff. And I guess we just kind of left it alone for a while. But, you know, now that other stuff is going on, you know, recently with the VA, maybe it's time to hopefully somebody will see this and do something about it. I mean, maybe, just hopefully. Somebody can be her voice. Somebody, right. you know... Um, some of the bigger people can be a voice or something um, and put it out there. I mean, because it, it's not, you know, it's not right. I mean, she should know how her dad died and she, sh you should know, your mom should know where exactly. that money went. Exactly, yeah. And if it was a nurse or a CNA or whatever at the home yeah. that manipulated your dad into that money. Exactly. I mean, they could have, I mean, I'm not saying this happened, but I'm just saying as an example, mm -hmm. you got this man living there every single night. What if somebody said, hey, you know, if you don't give me this money, I'm going to do whatever to you. Exactly. I mean, and, and, I, and your dad's the type you would have done it. Oh, yeah, most definitely. And I'm sure that, you know, I'm sure that stuff happens a lot. Right. I, you know. Right, I mean, but, but they took from you guys. Yeah, they did. Nobody was owed $20,000. Oh, yeah. My mom is struggling right now like you wouldn't believe, so it's it's unfair on a lot of levels. It is. It is. I mean, just, um, if somebody out there knows something, put it in the comments. If you guys know something she can do or a next step she can take, maybe. Or, you know, guys, just share this video. If you guys would just share, 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 it'll get to the right people. Um, you know, this is this is a true thing here. This is a true story. This is the truth. Um, you know, and and her dad was a veteran. I mean, a, a Vietnam vet. Um, we're both military. You know, my dad was a yeah. Vietnam. Um, and it just... You, it touches home a little bit, you know, when people are, these vets and stuff are manipulated and not treated properly. Um, that I know if he fell down that seat belt, he had some time. He didn't oh, just yeah. fall all of a sudden. He's been in that yeah. chair for how many years? Um, at least 10. So, and yeah. he didn't choke himself before and all of a sudden he right. happens to choke. Yeah. I mean, I just, things doesn't seem to add up and yeah. I'm saying that. It yeah. just doesn't seem to add up. It makes no sense. So if anybody knows anything or anybody can help her out, um, leave a, uh, a message in the description or PM her a personal message. You ain't got to put your name and stuff out there. But if you if there's something you could do or you know um, what her next step will be, and it ain't, you know, they've been to the lawyers and the lawyers won't take the case. So what's the next step? Where, where does she go from here?
here. Because right. it's in the back of your mind and you keep talking about it, so right. obviously it's bothering you. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I would like to know what happened, period. What happened? And, you know, that's, that's basically it. Yeah. And, you know, who was robbing your dad? And who was robbing my dad? Dad. I mean, because he took food out of your mom's mouth, basically, to, you know, give to some whoever. Yeah. And, and people that are in the military, they, you know, like you just said, they hold a special place to me. Mm -hmm. So for somebody to um, manipulate or take advantage of somebody that served our country, that's so wrong on so yeah. many levels. So that person needs to be found and, and dealt with. Right, they Basically. shouldn't get by with it. Nope. They should not get by with it. And they've got records of who worked with him. Most definitely. Every day. And somebody's bound to know who, you know, that woman is on the phone. The, the, you know, the two women. Somebody's bound to know whose name that is, you know. And, and did they have anything to do with it? They're, they're bound because to Because they could say anything. I mean, I've, I've worked at nursing homes before. And they'd say, oh, well, you know... He touched me, or right. yeah. uh, he said uh, something bad to me, or something like that, yeah. and they can, you know, they'll say stuff like that, and they'll manipulate them, and they'll think, oh gosh, no, you know, and they'll give money up and stuff. I, I've I heard of these situations like this, yeah. but he didn't really know everything that was going on until after he passed and found letters and stuff. Exactly, yep. So now you can't put two and two together. Yeah. So we're, she's reaching out for you guys' help. Anybody out there, share this video as much as you can. And let's get it out there. Let's see if we can find out what went, what happened to her dad and what, you know, something. Where we need to go next. What you need to do next. Yeah, most definitely. And, and if somebody else has a loved one in, in, you know, a VA home or something, you need to check on them. Don't just think that they're being taken care of because they may not be. No. And if you've got a story like this, then you need to do a video and you need to post it. And get these videos out there so people know it's not just in the hospitals that's happening. It's actually yeah. in the homes. Yes. And in the homes, they can be manipulated a lot a lot more because it's their home. Yep, it's they think home. they're going to lose their home. They're going to be homeless and stuff. Right. So they can do all kinds. You're right. You're 100% right. Because yeah. those guys in the VA homes, they are getting their check each month. Yes. A lot of them don't have family, and it's going into an account. Well, who's to say that somebody don't come by and manipulate them to get that money from them? Because they like, oh, they're in here. They don't need it. You're 100% you're right. Yeah. I mean, it just yeah. even though they have to pay for their VA living and stuff like that, mm -hmm. they do get a certain portion of it. So, yes. But anyway, guys, thank you guys. Yep. And... Um, any comments or anything, uh, just hey, leave them in the description, but PM her if you know anything or any way that she can move forward with this and, and her next step would be, because um, they're not going to do it. Obviously, they went that route, but we need to find out what went on. So, thank you guys, and please share. Thank you.